Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today we are dedicating this video to Rita. Uh, Rita exactly one month ago uh, asked us to do a video on Roman armour mainly because she was reading about the Romans so therefore she wanted a, a little bit more background about what they would have looked like, what they were wearing and how difficult or how easy it was to wear and maintain. So today really is a part two. Now when you look at the Roman soldier, as I mentioned in the other video, uh, it's a very difficult one just to say Roman soldier because we could look at a Roman soldier back in 55 BC, for example, one of the attempted invasions under Julius Caesar of Britannia. Uh, well, most of the time then uh, the Romans wore mail. Uh, or they could have even been wearing the very ancient armour which was nothing more than a bronze square with straps over the shoulders, very odd piece of armour uh, and a bronze helmet, um, very much like the ones that the ancient Greeks were wearing. Um, if we look at the Romans in the 4th century uh, or even the 5th century by the end of the Roman Empire um, the Roman soldiers do actually look like Anglo-Saxons. If you look at the helmets, they often have a nasal bar down the middle of it, and they're definitely wearing trousers. They're, they're, they're not wearing the typical tunica that you think of a Roman as wearing. So when we think of the Romans, we must make sure that we don't just slap the word Roman on it, uh, we have to specify. And as I said in the last video, uh, we specialise really in the first century, which is really the invasion of Britannia around about 43 AD and the conquest of Britannia. So that's the era that we're looking at specifically. And if you remember last time, I also mentioned that the Roman army was generally split into two different types. There was the citizen soldier, and just to recap that one, the citizen soldier was your legionary. And instead of bringing all that armor back in and then having to clean it and oil it to put it away, I've decided to show you a picture. So this is our Roman legionary and I'm sure you remember it from last time and we could do a test if you want this is something we like to play in schools for example what is the name of the helmet that was worn by a Roman legionary a few seconds have you got it yet it's a Cassius and that's the helmet made out of iron then we've got some body armour that protects the main part of the internal organs, for example, uh, and that was known as... Got it? Did you mention it? Did you write it down? Hopefully you didn't phone a friend. Well, that's Lorica, but it's not just Lorica. It's Lorica segmentata because it's armour made in bands or in segments. It's plate armour, basically. And then the only other thing that they had for protective purposes was the large shield and if you can remember that one fantastic no would you like a guess i always tell children it's very much like the things you can wheel to school four little wheels push it along jump on it especially downhill not a scooter a scooter so cassius lorica segmentata and a scooter and that's your legionary basically your citizen soldier and at first going back in history you had to be from rome itself not just italy but from rome itself and then as the period goes on they relax that rule and you had to be someone from italy or from the core of the roman empire and you have to remember the empire was big from hadrian's war so technically scotland down to north africa from spain to syria it was absolutely huge however the second type is what we're going to concentrate on looking at in this video and they're known as the auxiliaries now the auxiliaries are the add-ons basically and the romans used these quite a bit not just because they were what i what i usually say is the arrow fodder of the Roman army but also because they're often specialist troops we shouldn't just say they're the extra men they're the arrow fodder they're the the the, the make up the number type of troops these are very important men they were usually highly specialist uh, soldiers um, we have to group them 
as auxiliaries basically because they're not from uh, Rome itself they're not the citizen soldier but the interesting thing about these soldiers is they are usually specialist in archery for example so you would have a, a unit of auxiliary archers you could just get a unit of auxiliary uh, infantry in other words they would be carrying a sword and carrying a spear different weapons by the way to the legionary we could always do one uh, just on weapons of the legionary and auxiliary at a later date um, but then you also had the slingers for example often forgotten about the slingers these are the men that would go into battle with a slingshot in hand throwing the stones over to the enemy a lot of the stones uh, were just pebbles from a river other ones were actually lead shot uh, which often had swear words or rude pictures on shall we say uh, so if you get hit by these things you'd pick them up afterwards and it would swear at you uh, which I always think is quite amusing maybe we need to do one on weaponry just so I can add in all these extra little things but then there was also um, very lightweight troops that would would, would, would run around with, with nothing more than uh, very small lightweight spears but the, these are all grouped together as auxiliaries, extras, add-ons basically. And we must never forget the cavalry because they're technically part of this auxiliary arm. It's the legionary, the heavy infantry that do the bulk of the fighting. That's why they're well armed. That's why they're the citizen soldier as such. So what did these soldiers wear? What did these auxiliaries wear? Well, we'll start at the top in work down. They're not wearing a cassius like you saw last time made out of iron. They're actually going to wear what is often referred to as an inferior helmet. And there it is, there in all its glory. Children prefer this one. When we go into schools, and hopefully after lockdown and after COVID-19, we'll get back into schools. Um, it's quite interesting. Children prefer this one. I think because it's made out of bronze, they automatically think it's gold and a gold helmet with a spike on the top is a lot better than something that's silver in colour basically and as I mentioned this is actually made out of bronze so this is the mixture of tin and copper it's a combined mixture of the two and it creates this almost yellow uh, with a slight orange colour to it and that's mainly because of the copper in it and uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a helmet that protects the head is the best way of putting it. It's the oldest form of armour really. Uh, what you have to remember is before we have iron weapons in iron armour, we actually used bronze. If you remember when I looked at Greek armour, we looked at the bronze cuirass, for example, and the big bronze Corinth helmet. This is the armour that people had for centuries before we get a lot of iron being used. So that's our helmet. And unlike a legionary helmet, which is usually referred to as the uh, um, uh, Cassius, this is our Coolus helmet. Uh, and it has a lot of the features that the legionary helmet has. It has a brow uh, ridge on it to protect any swords from cutting into the face. It's got these huge cheek pieces and a neck guard attached. And when this is all tightened up on the face, it leaves a very small target area for the enemy to get at. But it's a very good helmet. It protects the whole of the head, it's rounded, so anything hitting the top, it would glance off to one side. But then we've got body armour. The body armour of a Roman auxiliary, be it cavalry, be it a slinger or an archer or whatever, was usually male very rarely would you find any other armour but that. It was usually male or no armour. And that sounds a shocking thing when you think of the Romans. But slingers, for example, were very light troops. They were very quick at getting from A to B. So they often wore no armour. So if you were going to wear armour as an auxiliary, then very simply, you would wear mail. And I've got some mail here. I actually have armour, chain mail armour, mail armour, um, medieval armour uh, made out of chain mail. I've got some uh, chain mail armour from the Tudor period because I was still wearing it. We know that from the Mary Rose. Uh, but this is my specific Roman chain mail or mail. Right, it's pretty heavy stuff. Now, I don't know if you can see from where you are, 
but it's made out of rings and it's made out of thousands and thousands of rings believe it or not and this would have given protection to the body of the soldier i won't wrap it uh, and unroll it it's basically a big t-shirt really it fits right over the body and the rings are very clever because what they have to do is they get the iron and they take the iron they hammer it really thin into a wire and then they coil it up then they cut it so you end up with a big pile of rings they hammer the ends flat and then they drill little holes in each individual ring and then they close them up together and then peg them or rivet them so it's actually individually riveted now hopefully you could see that in 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 the in the video when i held it up to the camera because it is actually very very clever the best thing about mail is it is cheaper than plate armor uh, you don't need to clean it that much because as it moves on your body it generally uh, cleans itself it's self cleaning and uh, it's quite comfortable to wear to be fair heavy to hold like that but when it's on the body just like lorica segmentata it spreads the weight now that's called lorica because lorica is latin uh, for the armor um, but this is lorica hamata and that means chain mail armor now I'm trying not to use the word chainmail because people often assume uh, that's what it's called. It's interesting that that word chainmail only comes along really in the Victorian era. A bit like saying uh, cavaliers look like this, roundheads look like this, uh, the, the, the thing musketeers had was called apostles. We get a lot of muddying of water by the Victorian era. So we should actually call it mail, which actually comes from a French word, mail, which basically means net. And that's where it all comes from. So you've got your coolest on your head, your bronze helmet. Uh, you've got your Lorica Hamata, which is your body armour. And then finally, like any good Roman, you carry a shield. And this is the shield as used by a Roman auxiliary. Not the big curved oblong, the scutum. This one is actually known as a clippius, and that's because it's an oval shield and it's flat. And these would have been carried by the auxiliaries, be it archers, be it the normal men carrying their spear and sword, or maybe even your slingers even. Uh, it, it's a, a shield uh, that's not used as the main defence, uh, but it's there to deflect blows and that sort of thing. Um, decorated dependent on what that unit was that we're talking about now it's important to think about the auxiliaries as well isn't they're not just specialists they're usually men from different countries and that's also quite important because to be a legionary you've got to be from Rome or at least Italy as the rules were relaxed but when it comes to an auxiliary you could actually come from anywhere and we know for example the Romans up on Hadrian's Wall were often people from North Africa they were also Roman auxiliaries from Romania for example they came from a very long way a very multicultural force really um, if I joined the Roman army way back in 43 AD I could join the Roman army and be an auxiliary but it's interesting most of the time when you join the Roman army as an auxiliary you are not serving in the country of your origin probably because the Romans thought well hang on a minute if we arm them and train them they could rebel so we send them to the far flung reaches of the empire so if I joined from Britannia I would probably serve in North Africa just like the North Africans or just like the Romanians were serving way up there on Hadrian's Wall. Now, one final thing about the cavalry. The cavalry were probably the best troops to have in the empire, especially on places like Hadrian's Wall. Lots of patrols going out, and these are fast troops that would sweep down on the enemy. And the reason why I want to talk about them separately is I believe they've probably got the best armour ever. Yes, it's bronze, purely because they are uh, wearing uh, auxiliary equipment, but look at the decoration on it. It has a fake hairdo, a fake wig, and it's got these fantastic gods actually on the
the cheek pieces and little fake ears. It's a brilliant helmet. And just to end on, those helmets often had a face mask. Not always, but they did have face masks that look like that, which I think are absolutely terrifying, really. So hopefully, Rita, you now know a little bit more about the Roman legionary armour and now you know a little bit more about the Roman auxiliary soldier's armour. Maybe we'll look at weapons next, the legionary weapons compared with the auxiliary weapons. We could see which has the best between the two. Anyway, keep sending those uh, requests in and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.